Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. We gotta talk all about Attack on Gorilla City. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet. Welcome to the jungle. There were so many Planet of the Apes references in this. I am so happy with what they did. I know a lot of you expected some of the fight scenes to be a little bit longer, but it's just the prelude to part two, which is gonna be next week. So if you're new to the channel, I do flash videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I even do giveaways too. I'll explain at the end of the video. So let's do top 10 WTF and comic book Easter eggs. I'm so happy with this two-parter. You have to consider it like a two-hour TV movie just because so much of this story is in part two. Like I told Flash, always think ahead. Now you will open the breaches and very soon Central City will fall before Grah. And let me know if you guys think the audio is okay. I changed it just a little bit, so it should sound a little better. Our number 10, Gorilla City Explainer. So we learned there's a city of super smart apes. They've captured Harrison Wells. We actually learned that they sent this cryptogram the same way the Team Flash sent a cryptogram into the multiverse. That's how they got HR to come to their Earth in the first place. Like you send a coded message, but the one that the gorilla sent is super advanced. So it gives you an idea of just how smart they are. It's not that they're as smart as humans, it's that they're super smart and they have psionic abilities, meaning that they can control other people. So they are a huge threat. And obviously the whole thing is a big long con on Grodd's part, but the way they disseminate information through the episode, you learn that they wanted to tease Harrison Wells, capture him, use him to get to Earth-1. Leading us into number nine, trying to avert the future, future news headline, city recovering from gorilla attack. Maybe if we can change more things, we can save Iris. But I really like this reverse flash idea. So there was a lot of shout outs to the Harrison Wells reverse flash from season one. He is the one that said that taking action to avoid some big future catastrophe only leads to something equally as bad happening. That's why you don't change the past, but Team Flash this season has learned that you might be able to change small things. But the really big things usually end up happening in different ways, even if they didn't go down the way you thought they would. Just one of many callbacks to the reverse flash in the episode. Barry using his signature move to take down Solovar. Grodd referencing him, father taught me well, always think ahead. So the reverse flash of season one is still very present even though we haven't seen him in a long time. They put the team together. I love all the Indiana Jones shout outs. Planet of the Apes, tell me you're going to Planet of the Apes. There's no way I'm staying behind. The whole thing here, Julian's worried about Caitlyn. I know they're teasing some sort of relationship, but he is really concerned for her in a genuine way. I love the way they tag that at the end too. You should fear me. Well, why don't we fear each other over a giant steak together? Number eight, welcome to the jungle, the gates of Gorilla City. So in addition to this being just like a really awesome wide shot, giant Star Wars Guns N' Roses Easter egg. It's just so much fun how they cram all those references and callbacks to season two in those opening moments before they get thrown in the cells. Like she remembers meeting Earth 2 Killer Frost. What happened to her? Oh, she is super dead now. So you see Caitlyn is starting to get more and more worried. So even though it seems like they're taking a lot of steps to prevent Caitlyn from becoming Killer Frost, she's actually more and more using her powers in small ways, which is making it worse progressively. So it sounds like one of those things that we're gonna arrive at no matter what. Like whatever ends up happening, Caitlyn's gonna keep having to use her powers to help her friends, and she's gonna get closer and closer to Killer Frost. So I already did a video about the Flash prophecy about someone betraying the team and talk a little bit about Killer Frost, Cisco stuff, so we'll add a link at the end of the video. But number seven, way back on Earth One, Wally and Jesse teaming up, Iris telling him to lock it down. This is all the prelude to her staying on Earth One, but you get the sense that she's super bummed out and she's just not really sure what Wally thinks of her. They figure it all out. It's all relationship stuff. So either you like this or you hate it. It's totally cool if you're not down with this, but they just want to let you know that they're going to be cool with each other and she's not jealous or anything. It's just that she's not sure what Wally thinks of her because she's just worried that he's more in love with being a speedster. And of course he's like, oh, that's bull crap. So I do like the character development that Wally and Jesse are getting. I'm a real big fan of Jesse Quick's character, so it'll be interesting to see how they use her the next couple weeks. Just be careful. If you've been watching the behind the scenes stuff, please don't post spoilers in the comments. Back to Earth 2, number 6, Grodd captures the team and explains the grand plan. Kill or be killed. Solabar is going to come to your Earth. He wants to attack you. I love people like Caitlyn because they help me. I never want to see harm come to them. So this is what you have to do. You have to kill him in the arena. And you start to wonder because Grodd is one of Flash's biggest enemies in the comics. 
what's going on here? Is there some big twist behind this? And it becomes a little more clear, number five, when Solovar, Mr. Keith David, enters. I was so happy with Keith David being cast on this show. He has one of the most awesome voices ever. Of course he should be Solovar. So he walks in and is super surprised to see Team Flash. Like, he did not expect more humans. So he accepts Flash's challenge in number four, Flash versus Solovar, is a pretty epic fight. I know a lot of you wanted it to go longer, but just remember that this is sort of the prelude to the bigger part two episode, which is next week. So they weren't going to waste too much time with this arena fight, but they just wanted to let you know what a badass most of these gorillas are. Solovar is very smart. He has all the same powers as Gorilla Grodd, and they're sort of a dichotomy. So Grodd is this really evil, power-hungry gorilla. Solovar is the wise one who doesn't want to attack humans, but is also very wary of them too. He would kill them if he needed to, but he doesn't seek war the way that Grodd does. He doesn't care about revenge. It was so funny watching Solovar just shut Barry down. All his normal tricks weren't working. Try the lightning throws. Tilly had to fight dirty using a reverse flash trick. That might come back again later in the season. Doing things that you never thought you would do. Learning from your enemy's tactics. So just remember that for when he's fighting Savitar later this season. Look at the work on his shield here. This is so crazy. In the spear tips too. They actually, the statue spear tips when they entered the city look like flash lightning bolts. So the craftsmanship is amazing. And you learn from the fights that the Flash has had with Grodd in the past too. Solovar has all those skills. And look how quickly he anticipates the Flash's next move. Like he can just time him down to a T. So if you thought the Barry was being super beta or he went down too fast, this is just them showing you that Solovar is that much smarter than everyone else. So the Flash runs real fast. That doesn't make him a genius. He's only a genius for 30 minutes at a time, and he did not read any books about fighting super gorillas when he entered that arena. We'll probably see some better strategizing when we get around to part two of this episode. Usually the team has to come together before they can take down something this big. Gorilla Grodd is one of the biggest threats that they face all season next to Savitar. The only thing that makes Savitar worse is that he has knowledge of the future and he's just flat out faster than all of the speedsters put together. But number three, Grodd reveals his true plan. He is pissed that Blash did not kill Solovar, mostly because even though he's in charge now, Solovar is still alive to challenge him and will probably be key to defeating Grodd in episode two next week. Solovar is always really important for fighting Grodd in the comics. Now, there have been a lot of issues, a lot of stories where the Flash has fought Grodd by himself with the help of other people. He even teamed up with the Rose. But the thing is, is that for a lot of those stories, Solovar was dead. He came back during Blackest Night during a brief period. But Solovar is the person that you want on your team if you're going to be fighting Grodd. We'll see what they do with them. Grodd made all those references about the hell that he was living in, living under Solovar's rule, living in one of Solovar's cages. So in a reversal of that, he may have just thrown Solovar into a cage of his own. But plans revealed, Grodd's been running a long con. He wants revenge against people in Earth-1 that put him in cages, so he's going to burn Central City to the ground. Number two, until Team Blash is able to escape by make-believing that Barry is dead. Remember, Caitlin had to use her powers again, meaning that her killer Frost condition is getting worse, even though she didn't have to actually kill someone. That would have been crossing the edge. Maybe that's a hat tip for the future. She accidentally kills someone, and that makes her become Killer Frost. But how crazy was it when Cisco suggested that they kill him? I'm the only one that can get you back, so you have to kill me. He actually meant that, but that's not something that you can come back from. So of course, everyone is like, hard pass, we are not killing anyone. So they try to trick Grodd, and I love how they get home and everything is super nice. Jesse Quick even says that she's going to stay. They get the kiss with Wally. Even Iris tells Barry, I don't know how you can be so positive. And he's like, I know we can defeat Savitar now because we won so hard. Julian probably had the biggest rule-breaking moment when he said, they were very smart, but we were smarter. Like, the minute you call out a victory like that, you know that they're going to take it right back and yank the rug out from under you. So, number one, post-credits teaser, Grodd has Earth-19 Gypsy, he's wearing his armor, there is a legion of gorillas ready to roll out, and they are coming to attack Central City. That's actually the name of the next episode, Attack on Central City. So it is going to be crazy. The whole thing here with Gypsy is they don't let you know about the twist after the big twist, like, oh my god, she's helping them. So I don't think she's evil. She wouldn't want to destroy Central City. So either he's blackmailing her or he's outright controlling her mind. Because just because Cisco and Gypsy have all those powers 
doesn't mean they're not susceptible to being taken over by Grodd. Let me know in the comments though, what was your guys' favorite moment? I love the way they plotted out Grodd's arc in this episode, how he feigns like he's the one that's in trouble and needs help, but then reveals that he was behind this grand plan all along, always one step ahead of The Flash. So even though the TV show is called The Flash, really Grodd is the main character of these two episodes. So it is gonna be epic to see how they take him down in part two. Maybe it'll have something to do with Solovar and it'll all come back around to the idea of them being able to change events, change things for the better, save people without completely being able to escape those future headlines. So they can always change small things, but there are some things that they probably will not be able to change. So the gorillas will smash up Central City really good, but they might be able to save some people from dying. But it was a great episode. It's going to be fun to see Jesse Quick on the TV show every week for at least the next couple weeks. I don't know exactly how long she's going to stay, but what's going to happen for the next couple of videos is the schedule is going to be a little bit different. I'll do a Flash trailer video next, then I'll do Legends of Tomorrow, and then I'm probably going to wait to do my Arrow episode till Thursday morning. There's a new round of the Injustice giveaway going on right now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. It's for a copy of the game. Congratulations to last week's giveaway winner, Malachi McNeil. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. So I'll post that Blash trailer video tomorrow morning. While you wait for that, you can click here for Wonder Woman Aries and you can click here to learn all about the Savitar prophecy. Thank you so much for watching. Let's high five. I'll see you guys in the next video.